As a few of you may remember my presentation on virtual reality from a few months ago, at the time it was all very theoretical, and neither my initial measurement unit or my screen had actually arrived in the post. Now, a few months later, the screen has arrived and I can show you what I've done. For this presentation, I will mainly be focusing on the software and in particular the graphics. So what have I done from last time? Firstly, I've removed the power pack because it was too heavy. I then removed the Raspberry Pi B, which I'll later replace with the smaller, and more importantly, lighter, Raspberry Pi A+. Plus. I also removed my DIY electrical tape head straps as they were a bit weak. Most importantly, I spray-painted it black because it looks cooler. <laughs> then, I bought a GoPro head strap and fitted it to my design. This was much sturdier than the straps I had before. I then attached the screen and the Raspberry Pi A Plus to the front of the headset. Next, I needed to create software. This is probably the most important part. You may be wondering how I'm planning to run high-end graphics on something that struggles to run two web browsers simultaneously. But not many people know that the Pi has advanced graphics capabilities. It uses the BCM2835 to process graphics, a chip originally designed for use in portable media players, and claims to be four times more powerful than the iPhone 4 processor. To access this, I'll be using a Python library called Pi3D. This will unlock the full 3D capabilities of the Pi. But first, what are 3D graphics? 3D graphics are made up of models, like this. A simple picture is then applied as a texture to give a semi-realistic look. Finally, the image is rendered. This takes into account any light sources and makes the final image look more realistic. There are three main parts to create a 3D image. A camera, an object, and a light source. Unlike real life, it's the camera that gives out light rays that make their way to the light. In this example, there is no light, so the camera sends out lots of rays. This takes a long time. Adding a light means the camera knows which rays to send out, once it will eventually intercept with the light. Unfortunately, in my software, there is no light, so the camera just sends out lots of rays. This is very time consuming. Normally, a 3D image will be rendered like this. The software processes the image, and as my animation showed on the other side, calculates the light path and ends up with this final image. There's only one problem. This simple image took 24 seconds to render on a normal PC. This would definitely not work with the Raspberry Pi. As a result, when you try and move around it in real time, the image is slow and really low quality. This is no good for virtual reality, where the image should change at least 60 times per second. The solution to this is baking. Baking is basically pre-rendering the image. This works by taking your object and creating a net of it, the computer then generates this image, which shows how the light in the 3D environment falls on the cube mapped in 2D. This is perhaps easier to understand when you look at how it baked the floor. You can clearly see where the source of light is, where the box is, and where the shadow of the box is. Because of baking, we can now move around our models in real time. This is much more suitable for virtual reality and the Raspberry Pi. The baking will have to be done on a normal PC, However, once the image is generated, it can be moved across to the Pi A+, plus, or maybe even the zero. Crucially, the PC can now be disconnected and the Pi can run high-quality graphics independently. This sets it apart from the Oculus Rift, which requires an extensive external PC to generate the high-quality graphics needed. So how does all this help me? Baking means that I can have much faster rendering times, leading to less lag, giving a much better experience. So what have I actually done so far? The Python library that I use comes with a few demo files. I took the demo which I thought looked the coolest, one of planet Earth, and modified it to make it stereoscopic. This is where I had the problem. The way that Py3D generates two images assumes the camera, cameras are parallel to each other. In reality, this is not how we see. Our eyes are actually slightly not parallel. This allows us to focus on selected objects. Knowing this, I took the distance between my two cameras the distance the object being focused on and created a triangle. I then did some maths to find out the angle needed and came up with this equation. I modified the Pi 3D library to take this into account and now my demo works. I've also started to create a game in which the player is a spaceship and has to dodge space debris. In the future, I hope to use more models that I've created myself and hope to create my own program rather than using demo files. I also hope to use an inertial measurement unit to calculate where the user is locking and maybe even operate the Pi Zero. This is smaller, takes less power, but crucially is lighter. I'm also looking to fit bigger lenses, the ones which I will replace it with, 
are twice as big. Thank you for listening. Any questions? What are your What are your plans for this? Would you like to sort of turn this into something to sell to people? Uh, possibly in the future, yeah. But at the moment, it's just on an initial prototype. What's been the hardest thing to do? Uh, probably modifying the Pi 3D library to make it uh, look 3D. Yeah, that was quite hard. Have you thought of using two smaller screens? Uh, two pies, one rendered on the left and one rendered on the right. I could do that, but I don't think you'd be able to get them to synchronise well enough. But it's something I could look into, yeah. Especially the pies you Yeah, maybe. <laughs>